Despite over 40 years of research and countless failed compounds, developing therapeutics to target KRAS, the gene responsible for some of the deadliest cancers has eluded scientists. In this episode on new pharmaceuticals approved in 2022, we will be discussing Adagrasib, developed by Murati Therapeutics, which targets the KRAS protein. KRAS is the gene responsible for making the protein KRAS, a GTPase which is involved in instructing cells to proliferate, meaning to grow and divide, among other functions. KRAS is the most commonly mutated oncogene, which is a gene that has the potential to cause cancer. Mutations in this gene are widespread in the deadliest types of cancer. KRAS has been previously thought of as undruggable. This is mainly due to its high affinity for GDP and lack of distinct binding pockets for compounds to interact with. However, a single mutation, KRAS G12C, where the glycine 12 amino acid has been mutated to a cysteine, has offered an entry into drugging this target. This is through covalent inhibition of the mutated cysteine residue. This mutation is of interest as it is the most frequent mutation in KRAS for lung cancer. Adagrasib works by binding in the switch 2 pocket of the protein, covalently binding the mutated cysteine 12 residue and locking the protein in its inactive GDP bound state. The starting point for Adagrasib was the compound shown, which had previously been reported. This compound was originally discovered on a screen of Array Biopharma's covalent fragment collection and a small amount of optimization was carried out. The molecule showed good potency and efficacy, but had poor pharmacokinetic properties. To address this, the researchers first used LCMS to identify the metabolic liabilities responsible for the compound's poor pharmacokinetic properties. Researchers found that 76% of metabolites present contained a modification in which the phenol and naphthol ring had undergone conjugation in the form of an O-gluconoride. Conjugation of the acrylamide was also a major liability, with 50% of metabolites showing glutathione conjugation of the acrylamide. The hydroxyl group was clearly a weak point, however it served an important role in the hydrogen bonding to the aspartate 69 residue. Due to this, a series of indazoles were implemented to act as naphthol isosteres and retain the hydrogen bond formed by the hydroxyl group, while removing the unwanted metabolism. The compound with IC50 values of 351 and 254 were chosen for further testing as they were similar in potency to the starting compound. However, these analogues showed low permeability, so were not taken forward. Instead, the hydroxyl group was removed. This compound was synthesized and tested. Clearance and bioavailability were now improved. However, there was a drop in potency as the hydrogen bond that had previously been formed with the hydroxyl group had been lost. To overcome this, the researchers looked for further interactions that could be formed to counterbalance this loss in potency. The X-ray crystal structure of this compound bound to KRAS G12C showed a water molecule complex with glycine 10 and threonine 58 residues. If this water molecule could be displaced, a significant increase in potency could be made. The crystal structure showed that an appropriately placed substituent on the piperazine ring could displace this water molecule. Analogues were made and a section of these are shown on the right. The methyl and ethyl alcohols were designed to displace the water and replace the hydrogen bonds formed with the water with hydrogen bonds to the alcohol group. However, these analogues turned out to be less potent than the original. Instead, the analogues substituted with a cyanide group were significantly more active, and it was found that S-diastereoisomer was 100 times more potent than the R-stereoisomer. This modification, as well as increasing potency, also improved the AZME properties associated with the molecule. This compound went on to act as their lead compound and underwent further optimization. Lead optimization began first by trying to increase potency further. Going back to the X ray structure, it can be seen that 8 position on the NAPFAR ring is in an ideal position to make an interaction with this hydrophobic ridge. A series of analogues were synthesized to probe this area with chlorine and methyl substituents being most active. These analogues were used in efficacy studies to demonstrate the ability of these compounds to treat tumours. They were also used in two further pharmacokinetic studies, one in lab rats and one in beagle dogs, which allowed the researchers to use an interspecies scaling to predict human pharmacokinetic properties of these molecules. These gave values of clearance that were greater than liver blood flow, indicating the compounds were also being metabolised outside the liver. Based on observations and the literature, it pointed towards metabolism of the acrylamide electrophile through glutathione conjugation, 
with further experiments being used to confirm this. This led to the last step in optimization, which was to reduce the metabolic liability of the acrylamide warhead. At this stage, the researchers chose to pursue the chlorine substituted analogue instead of the methyl substituted analogue. This is due to greater target engagement of the chlorine substituted analogue. Previously reported work had showed that substituted acrylamides can retain potency while being less reactive to glutathione conjugation. A range of these were synthesized and screened for potency as well as stability in human whole blood. The analogue with the fluorine substituted in the two position gave by far the best properties, as although it was slightly less active than the other analogues, its stability was far better. This brings us to the end of development and gives us the final structure of adagrasib. We will now begin with a retrosynthetic analysis of adagrasib. The first bond that could be disconnected is the acrylamide warhead to give a carboxylic acid and the amine on the papyrazine. Next we can look at the two groups coming off the pyrimidine ring. These could be installed by a combination of SNAR reactions and or palladium couplings depending on which starting materials we start with and which order we do the reactions in. Finally, a buckwood heart reaction could be used to couple with the nitrogen in this cyclic amine to the NAPFA ring. We will start with the medicinal chemistry route. This is the route used when synthesizing these compounds for the first time in small amounts for screening. The synthesis starts from this dichloro bicyclic pyrimidine core with the nitrogen benzyl protected. Reaction with sodium methoxide in methanol allowed for an SNAR reaction in which the methoxide ion reacts through the more activated position for aromatic substitution. The alcohol could then be coupled to the second chlorine position using palladium and binap as a ligand. Deprotection of the benzyl group using palladium over charcoal and hydrogen gave the free amine, which could then be reacted in the buckwood heart rate reaction to couple with the substituted NAPFA ring. Demethylation of the methoxyl group was achieved using ethan thiol and sodium hydride. The hydroxyl group was then reacted with triphthalic anhydride, converting the hydroxyl group into a triphthalate, which could act as a leaving group in the subsequent SNAR reaction with the substituted papyrazine ring. Finally, the acrylamide warhead was installed using T3P as a coupling reagent. While being a good route for initial development, this route had a poor final yield of 1%. This was mainly due to some poor end-stage reaction yields. The development of this synthesis focused on the reordering of bomb-forming events to improve late-stage yields. One observation the researchers made was that if the papyrazine ring could be installed early on in the synthesis, this would eliminate three steps, two of which were low yielding. This was the first step in the commercial route to add aggressive. The alcohol could then be coupled using palladium coupling using new optimised conditions to lower the palladium loading. A bulk protecting group on the cyclic amine was used to avoid palladium deprotection needed for the previously used benzyl group. The bulk group could be removed using HCl and the product could be crystallised using tartic acid. This was then neutralised and reacted in a barcode heart rate reaction like in the previous synthesis. The benzyl carbamate group was removed using mercaptoethanol, allowing for the final AMI coupling to take place. This synthesis improved the yield from 1% to 32% and allowed 100 kg batches of allagrasib to be made. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments so I can respond. Also, if you would like to have your say on what video should be uploaded next, Go to the community tab and vote on the next video poll.